Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further to applications of integrals and now look at the area of a surface of revolution or surface area and look at the example two of the example series. And in this example, I'm going to go over well one of the solutions, solution one using dx and in a later video I'll use uh, solution two which is dy. And this will make more sense as I go get through the example because you could do multiple, uh, you could solve this example in multiple ways. Yeah, basically the example I'm going to solve is this one, the arc of the parabola y equals x squared from the point 1, 1 to 2, 4 is rotated about the y-axis. Find the area of the resulting surface. So now uh, the way to best way to solve this example is first of all graph this out. So what this say what this is saying is well when you graph it out like this. Yeah, where this is the x and y axis, so the arc of the parabola y equals x squared. So it's from the it's from x is one to x is two, and if you were to graph that out, so let's say this is one, this is two. So the graph looks something like this. It's a parabola, and then at this point it's solid. I'll just draw this whole way, and then at this point we have the solid. So this this is the part that we are rotating. So we want to rotate this about and then find the area, surface area of the resulting surface. So we rotate that. This function is y equals x squared. And at this point, this is 4 and this is uh, 1, 1, 2, 4. So when we rotate it, when we rotate it, we get something that looks like this. So rotate it across and then something like this. This is a point there, dot, 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 around. And basically the resulting uh, surface that we want to find the area is this across it, so all the way around it like that. And now basically we have to solve for the um, surface area. So if we recall the surface area formula, this is one way of writing it. So surface From my last video, surface area formula. And in our case, this formula is basically going to be, in, uh, we're going to call it S. So S for the surface area is integral from 1 to 2 of 2 pi x ds. And the reason we're having this is because, or well, let's basically write where, in our case, 2 pi x can be considered the circumference of any uh, band or or any s sub interval of this surface area that we're trying to get circumference, and the ds is going to be the arc length right here. So if we were to draw it over here, we would consider let's say we take a, a random piece here. We'll consider this as ds, and then if you were to rotate that about all the way across this like that. And then we rotate it across, and then it's uh, actually both sides, and then rotate like that as well. So we have this uh, this random uh, this shell around, and this is the area we're trying to get at across. And this area can, can be considered as well circumference uh, times it by this ds. And in this case, we're going to use an average radius, and that average radius is from well from here. To here, so this is going to be well x. So that's the average radius, and then we have this circumference 2 pi x right there, and then times it by ds gives you that surface area all the way around it, like I showed in my earlier videos. And and again, the arc length formula basically this one is equal to yeah, this one's equal to like I showed in my earlier videos. Basically, ds is equal to 1 plus dy over dx squared, null square root dx. And this is the, the solution we're going to use is solving this one. For this example, we're going to use it using this formula. But like I showed as well in my earlier videos, basically ds, this, you could also write it as 1 plus dx over dy, uh, dy right here. So in my next video, I'll, I'll solve this the same example, but using this one, this one will be the solution two. So this one will be called solution one, which is this video. 
So let's just continue forward using this formula. So basically what we have, we need to solve for this ds. So we have y is equal to x squared. First thing we need to do is find dy to dx or the derivative. The derivative of x squared is just 2x right there. Then when we plug this inside a ds formula, so ds of 1 plus dy over dx all squared dx is equal to 1 plus, put the 2 inside, 2x squared dx, and then this simplifies further. Yeah, further into, well, just square root 1 plus, and then square this, 4x squared dx. So we have this as our ds. Now we can just plug this inside the surface area formula. So then we have the surface area is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 pi x dx, which equals 2, take the 2 pi out. Integral from 1 to 2 of x ds, which is, in this case, one uh, square root 1 plus 4x squared dx. Let's write this a bit neater, so like that. And now to solve this, we could use substitution because, so use substitution to solve this integral like I showed in my earlier video on substitution for integrals. In this case, we want to get rid of this x, and when we take the derivative of this uh, 1 plus 4x squared, we get a, an x variable, so we can use that to eliminate this x. And I'll, I'll illustrate that here. So let uh, u equals to, uh, let, let u equals to 1 plus 4x squared, so that the du is equal to, take der the derivative, the derivative of 1 to 0, derivative of 4x squared, put the 2 down, so we have 8x, then dx, this is a different differential. So we have this, so this means we have this x dx, and that's the x dx over there. So if we rearrange it, we get x dx is equal to du over 8. So we could use that to plug it in. And also we change the interval, so now at x, at x is equal to 1, we have u is equal to 1 plus 4, 1 squared, with a, which is just 1 plus 4 is 5. So that's at u equals 5. And at x equals to 2, we get u is equal to 1 plus 4, 2 squared. This is going to be equal to 1 plus 4 times 4, which is 16 which equals 217. So putting this all together, we have the integral or as surface area s is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 pi x, and then this is 1 plus 4 x squared dx, which equals 2, when we plug in everything, take this 2 pi out, and then we have integral from 5 to 17 now, because that's the 1, that's the 17, the x, b, x dx is du over 8, and this square root 1 plus 4x squared is just going to be square root u. And then we have this du over 8, that's because we got rid of the x dx. So now simplifying this even further, we get, well, this 2's cancel, so we'll have uh, this becomes u over uh, 4, and it takes 8 out, put it outside of the integral, it's a constant. So we have pi over 4, integral from 5 to 17, and I'll write this u as u to the power of 1 half. It's easier to take the integral of this. So the integral of this, this is just pi over 4, and then when you evaluate this integral of this, you add, uh, add 1 to the power, which becomes 3 over 2. So it becomes 3 over 2, and then we divide by that power. So dividing it, you'll get three, 2 over 3 from 5 to 17. Simplifying further by taking this constant out, just 2 over 3. This is going to be times 2 over 3. So then it will just be left with u. This is 5, 17. And then plugging those inside. So this, this cancels. This is 2. We get pi over 6. And then we have right here... Plug this, as uh, is 3 over 2, forgot that. So we have that, plug that in, so we have 17 power of 3 over 2 minus, when you evaluate it, 5 power of 3 over 2. And you could simplify this further or just write it in a more, uh, more common notation. This is pi over 6. And then right here, this is 17. You get the same thing as 
as writing two over two plus one half, so that's the power, or this is the same as one, so one plus one half. And the reason we're doing this is because when you multiply powers, you add them up. Or when you multiply uh, a power, uh, a number, power of anything that's the same number, you just add these up. So it's pi over six. And now this 17, this is the same thing as writing 17 to the power of two over two, or it's power of one times it by 17 power of one half minus five power of one times it by, um, this is five, one half. And the, and the halves are just squared, square roots. So we have, write it as the final form, 17 times square root 17 minus five times square root five. And this is our surface area. So, and then when you plug this into the calculator, this is the exact value. When you plug it in, like I have here, it's about 30.85. And here's pi over 6 times 17 times square root 17 minus 5 times square root 5. It's around 30.85 when you round it up. So it's 30.85. And now exploring this example even further, basically as a check of our answer, notice that the surface area should be close to that of a circular cylinder with the same height and radius halfway between the upper and lower radius of the surface. So what this means is if we were to graph this out again, so this x, y, and so that cylinder that or that shape we had was something like this, where the, it looks across like that. So it's something like this. That is our shape. Let me just draw it a bit better. So that is our shape. So uh, in our case right here, this is the point one, this is up to two. So if you were to draw a cylinder uh, in between these two, so a cylinder, let's say it's the same height, so we would go, this is in 3D, so it's something like this. Let's say it's uh, at this point so, and then it goes to halfway across, so at 1.5 radius, and then the same height across to here. So if it's something like this, where you now you draw a circle, let's say it becomes something like this, and it goes past it here. So if you have a shape like this, draw this all the way down, so if you draw a cylinder across like this and find the surface area of this one, where the height is the same thing, so the height is, well, 4 minus 1 equals to 3, that's the difference in the, in the y values of the points, and the radius is, again, that's just going to be 1.5. So the area of this one, or the area of the cylinder, we'll call it AC, is equal to just 2 pi uh, r, which is the radius, so 2 pi r, which is circumference, times it by height. So which equals 2, 2 pi times 1.5 times 3. When you plug this into the calculator, we get, yeah, we get over here, when you plug it in, 2 times pi times 1.5 times 3 is about 28.27. Let me round it up. So it's basically 28.27 which is somewhat close to this 30.5. So this is a good estimate of our, um, of our area. So we, could, we know that it should be somewhere similar to it. So that's a good check. And now another estimate, basically, alternatively, the surface area should be slightly larger than the area of a frustum of a cone with the same top and edges. And again, like I showed in my earlier video, the frustum is just the base of a cone with the tip cut off. So if we were to draw this to illustrate this better, so again draw that same uh, shape that we uh, are that we found the surface area for, so y, x, so you have it something like this, it's round, let's draw it better like that, and it curves like that, I'll exaggerate it. So this is our shape, but the yeah, the frustum if it's the same top and bottom edges, so we're going same top and bottom. 
Yeah, here, I have it for at the right. That's the same top and bottom edges. So when we have it, it was just a straight line segment. So we do that, and again, the frustum is just, we when you cut off the tip of the cone, it just continues on and on for that cone. So it, it so this our surface area should be uh, larger than this one. And then this is going to be the same curvature across. It's going to be the, yeah, the same top, same bottom, etc. And this is our uh, function like that. Where this value here is L, this is, we'll call this R1. In our case, R1 is equal to, this is 2, and then this is R2, and R2 is just equal to 1. And if we basically recall the formula of a frustum or part of this cone, like I showed in my earlier video, basically the area in this area of a, I'll call it AF or for frustum, is just going to be equal to 2 pi r times l, where l is a slant height, r is the, I'll just write where, r equals to the average radius. So it's the average radius, which equals 2, in our case, r1 plus r2 divided by 2, which equals to 1 plus 2 divided by 2, equals 3 over 2, so this is 1.5, same as the uh, cylinder. So we have this, and then the this is the height L, and then this one, what we could do is, in solving that part, it's basically, we have it like this, this is L, and then the difference between these two, I'll just draw this across, this is just 2 minus uh, 1, which is going to be 2, I mean, which is one, 2 minus 1, so this, this is just 1, and this value here is 3. And you can see it across here. Yeah, this is not the scale because this is 1 and this is all the way up to 2. This is not the scale. But uh, anyway, so if we solve for L, recall Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras. Pythagoras theorem. If we have basically a, a right angle triangle, A, B, C. Then the formula c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So in our case, this is the right angle triangle. We have L. So we have L when you square root it. This is going to be, well, 1, which is going to be our a. This is our b. Yeah, so 1 squared plus 3 squared, which equals 2 square root. 1 plus 9, which is just 10. So we just plug this into the formula. So we have... A F is just simply equal to two pi, uh, two pi R L, which equals to two pi times 1.5 times square root 10. When you plug this into the calculator, what we get is two pi times 1.5 times square root 10 is about 29.80. So this is 29.80 roughly, which, which is exactly like what we thought it should be where the exact formula of this of this uh, of our shape should be slightly larger so vs the 30.85 uh, which we calculated so this is correct so this is slightly bigger than this uh, surface area as it should be because ours is just a bit bulgier on the edges there so anyways that's pretty much it and also just for completeness sake I'll highlight this is the area that we were of the frustum that we just saw. Anyways, that is all for today. If you learned from this pretty extensive uh, example on how to use the um, uh, surface area formula and arc length formula, etc. In the later videos, I'll show that you could use this uh, this solution too. We're using this formula. It's the same thing. I'll get the same answer. I'll do that in my next video. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learn like always. You can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution